Crypto assets have been hitting the headlines recently, and they have both their fans and their detractors. But given the size of the market, the high profile fan base, and the recent roller coaster ride in valuations, they cannot be ignored. Crypto assets feature in our 2022 Sonar report on emerging risk insights. And I'm very pleased today to be joined by Professor Roger Vattenhofer of the Information Technology and Electrical Engineering Department at ETH in Zurich to discuss the challenges, the risks, including for the insurance industry, of crypto assets. Professor Vattenhofer, welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Nice to have you here. So first of all, how would you define crypto assets and what are the, what are the main forms? I think the best way to define it is to come from assets as we know, like bank accounts. And uh, in bank accounts, you have a bank which takes care that the money you have in the bank is safe. They usually store the money on several computers that they are sort of fault tolerant. They use some crypto on top of that. And I would say crypto assets are almost the same, right? You have several computers who store the information about your assets. The only difference is, I would say, that the computers are not owned by a single company, by your bank, but by several companies or several individuals. And so in some sense, it's more secure if you want. OK. And there's been an exponential rise, both in the size of the market and the valuation of some of these assets has come down recently, of course. But what's been the driver of that? So I guess for the value uh, exponential growth, mostly I would say it's because pe people believed in it. They w would think, you know, Bitcoin is going to be worth 100 times as much in a few years. So that probably drove it. And on top of that, maybe the central banks that uh, were printing money in the last few years. So that didn't help to uh, give trust to, to central bank money. So maybe people also thought maybe I should have something else uh, on top of that. OK. And then what are the what are the benefits or what is the impact of cryptocurrencies on the global economy today? Yes, I would say uh, what I mentioned before, the security is one of the benefits. So you could have a more secure asset if you trust yourself that your passwords are not stolen. OK, let's uh, let's remark this right now. Uh, and the second, uh, I would say, benefit is that we have a more you know, decentralized uh, money or the more decentralized asset. Usually money is controlled by, by central banks, as I said, and here we have something which is really not controlled by anybody or just by an algorithm. Mm -hmm. And does that bring risks with it? Well, there's many risks, I would say. So we have seen a high volatility for uh, the assets so that they, you know, uh, jump in prices up and down all the time. And then, of course, uh, there's risks that the government will never accept it. So you can never pay taxes with your crypto assets. That's also a big risk that it's never really accepted in, in many situations, many forms. And I would say uh, other risks or other problems with it are maybe energy consumption with at least with the old school cryptocurrencies. That's something we see there. So this is going away with newer currencies, but old school currencies have that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK. And then in the recent Sonar, uh, we look at the sort of the growing crypto market as an opportunity for insurers to offer uh, new covers such as loss or damage to wallets, to sort of crypto wallets and those sorts of things and NFTs. Um, what risks, risks do you think insurers should be aware of? Well, as many risks, as many opportunities, I would say, at the same time with the risks. So uh, we didn't mention, for instance, smart contracts. That's one of the big opportunities right now. And that goes together directly with the risks. So people have been implementing smart contracts and they're building these whole decentralized finance systems around these smart contracts where you can combine smart contracts in arbitrary ways. And I would say for insurers, uh, that's one of the opportunities here to look into these uh, smart contracts and maybe say, this is a safe smart contract. We give you guarantee that this works. And, uh, and that would be something. Or, or even a step further, go to a whole blockchain and say this whole blockchain is something we, we guarantee that it's safe. So I think that's one of the opportunities for, uh, for insurance companies. And others are, uh, you know, there's other risks, I would say. You know, there's uh, programming bugs, uh, there's people losing the passwords. So that's also a, a nice opportunity, of course, to kind of make this more safe. Thank you. And then, and then, so, I mean, it feels like a very forefront technology now. Obviously, we've been familiar with it. Uh, the things like NFTs are coming in and so on. How do you see the technology developing in the next, you know, sort of the, the next decade, the next two decades? Where's that going? Right. So I would like to see uh, 
some you know uh, traction in areas which haven't received much yet for instance if you take something like real estate uh, markets so all these things are really still controlled in an old school way and that's not uh, how it should be i think the technology could help a big deal there and essentially real estate market is like an nft it's a non-fungible token it's this house which is there and who owns it and that you can give shares to several people and do things like that in the nft market uh, itself let's say what people would uh, consider an NFT market that we see a lot of, you know, volatility, I guess, in the next uh, uh, years to come. And maybe it's a bit uh, a weird application area in the first place, but maybe digital art, for instance, uh, as the main driver currently for NFTs, has never seen a lot of traction in the past. I, I was actually looking around and looking for what was the biggest sell for uh, before NFTs in the digital art market, and there's not much there. So I think there's a so a lot of things going to happen there as well, but okay. with a lot of risk involved. And then I assume that it's the currency for, for the metaverse as well, I suppose. It's, uh... Yes, so that, that's what people believe in. I guess, you know, everything goes digital. Mm. Of course, that's a trend you have seen for many years. It would be uh, strange not to have that. But I would go back to the composability. I think that's in the metaverse something we might see very much, right? That all of a sudden we can combine things in in ways that are very complicated in traditional finance, for instance, and we can see these things happening in, uh, in the crypto space. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then a role for insurance in the metaverse? Um, similar as, uh, as in the you know, current crypto asset market, I would right. say. Yeah. So I would think that many people don't trust the smart contracts, they don't trust the programs behind it, and I think you ins insurance can uh, help there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and then there's a, there's a lot of discussion at the moment about, uh, I think it's stable coins and, uh, and those that are backed by uh, hard currency and so on. And right. of course, you know, I think you know, some uh, governments famously, for example, in South America, uh, beginning to sort of take on Bitcoin or at least you know, think about digital currencies. What, what does that mean for geopolitical stability for eco economies globally? Yes, so you mentioned something very important, the stable coins and also the so-called oracles, where you basically have... Uh, a transition between the real world and the crypto world. So there's a kind of an interface there. And these are the things which will be the most critical things in the years to come. Uh, we have seen it with stable coins just a few weeks back, actually, yeah. that, uh, that this was a problem. And oracles will be the same thing, that you know uh, they are built in some way, but they cannot really trust it. Now, I would hope that eventually central banks might enter the game for instance and bring their own central bank digital currency and then you have a combination of the old world and the new world which is much more safe than the current hacky situation that we have yeah, yeah. okay well a very interesting future to come and uh, obviously uh, potential for insurers professor Wattenhofer of the ETH in Zurich thank you very much indeed for joining us today thank you very much